Praise the Lord, my daily Bible study friends. Today is April the 8th. It is the day of the 2024 eclipse. It is seven years almost to the day from the last one that we had in 2017. Now, I don't know. The Lord hasn't spoken to me concerning anything, at least not to this moment, of what this eclipse may mean and what it may entail. What I do know is the Word of God. The Bible says in Genesis, the first chapter, and 14, it says, For, <clears throat> and, God let, and God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days, and for years. Then it goes on to say, Let them be for lights in the firmament of heaven, and to give light upon the earth, and it was so. And watch out what it says. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night. And God set them in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth, and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the, fir- were the fourth day. So God created them for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. That's why I believe that there is a message in this entire eclipse given to the understanding that it was seven years, almost to the day of the last eclipse. And now this eclipse is forming an X over the United States. And the eclipse before that formed an an Aleph and an Omega, uh, the beginning and the end, the Tav and the uh, Alpha of the ancient Greek alphabet, given the fact that the last one went over seven cities named uh, Salem. And this year, it's going over a near seven cities named Nineveh. Given the idea that the uh, constellation for the whale is in the stars above. All of these things have a message. I can't tell you what that message is. All I can tell you is I believe it is biblical. Now, things could go real crazy today, or it could be a day like any other day except that we are going to have an amazing display. And I would suggest if you get a chance, you should look at it. I have the, uh, I'm fortunate enough to be near Indianapolis, Indiana, which is very close to the center, if not the center of the entire event. And I may go out there to see that. I haven't decided yet what we're doing. What I'm not is, I'm not afraid of what this brings because I am okay with Jesus Christ. I've asked him, Amen. And I've been filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I have repented of my sins, and I've been baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins. If you haven't done those things, if you haven't repented and been baptized in the name of Jesus, or filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, you need to get on it really quick. Now, your repentance is going to come sometimes in waves. You'll feel the Spirit of the Lord calling you to repentance. You're going to have to, at that point, go after it. Amen. This is something you'll have to make a decision to do. God is not going to save you without your desire to be saved. He's not going to deliver you without your desire to be delivered. But he will send a spirit of repentance upon you. He will send a spirit of visitation. And what we have learned as we've walked in Christ, and you will learn also when you accept his offer of salvation, is that these times of refreshing don't come every day. They come once in a while. When they come to you, you need to act upon those things. Look at the skies above. Look at the world beneath. Look at the political situation. Look at the wars and rumors of wars. Look at the river Euphrates that's drying up. Look at the um, mark of the beast that's just on the horizon waiting for the removal of the saints for it to go into effect. This is all happening around you at at a great speed, a great pace. It is time for you to repent of your sins and ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins. Amen. Now, if this is not an harbinger of the coming events, which I believe it is, I don't know what they are exactly, but I do believe it does bring, again, 
more discussion about the second coming of Christ, even if it's not, even if we have another 50, 70 years, even if that's the case, guess what? When you give yourself to Christ, it'll be the best 70, 50 years that you'll ever have. If you die and you die in the Lord, you'll raise up into glory with him. So don't delay. Take a look up. Look up. Lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. Amen. And subscribe to this channel. One thing I will not do is corrupt the gospel. I will teach you the truth. The truth is you need to repent of your sins, and you need to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of those sins. You may repent if you want, but if you're not baptized in Jesus' name, you're not going to receive the forgiveness of the remission of sins, because in Acts 2.38, both of those are required. Amen. And then you're promised the gift of the Holy Ghost, and you'll know it by speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gives you the utterance. Well, I hope that all things go well today for you, and I hope to see you here, there, or in the air very soon. God keep you and watch you today in Jesus' name.